All righty, so it's almost time for the funnest holiday of the year, Halloween. So while you guys prepare your costumes and themed sweet treats, I'll be helping you decide on a scary movie to rug up under the covers to. Here are my 10 favorite horror movies so far from 2022. Keep in mind I haven't seen all the released films on screen right now, are just a handful that I'm yet to watch. And at number 10 is Watcher. One of the smaller budget horror thrillers here simply titled Watcher follows a young actress who is being stalked, although no one around her seems to really notice. She is alone in a foreign setting, having to deal with a literal serial killer, but is unfortunately partnered to the most oblivious man ever. It's one of those movies that frustrates the hell out of its viewers. It's stereotypical horror in that some will be yelling at their TVs, ordering fictional characters around. But unlike other horrors where the silly character decisions are script oversights, Watcher is actually a commentary on isolation, having the protagonist literally alone and having to discover a newfound independence in herself. Chloe Akuno's Hitchcock-inspired process helps guide us viewers through what is a predictable script, but in this genre predictability is a given and Watcher, just for having us viewers engaged and on the edge of our seats throughout this cat and mouse game, earns a spot on this list. At 9 is Fresh. Just for you foodies, we have a meat themed production which made the rounds on TikTok earlier this year. Fresh is a modern dating nightmare, guy meets girl, girl likes guy and guy is a cannibal. A simple subject is explored in a rather upsetting way, upsetting to the stomach at least. The anti-dating outlook is glaring and helped by the alluring chemistry between Sebastian Stan and Daisy Edgar Jones, a chemistry which continues to be the draw card even after she discovers what his favourite meal is. Fresh is surprisingly a lot of fun despite harbouring gruesome themes and vulgar content. There are multiple infectiously fun dance scenes, there are awesome tea time conversations, there is a powerful conclusion that is hard not to smile at. Fresh isn't your typical scary movie, but it's gruesome enough to win over horror fans and amusing enough to intrigue some outside the genre as well. And at 8 we have Smile. Smile is one of the most recent releases of the year, coming out just under a month ago, but it's also one of the most popular releases thanks to its overzealous advertising campaign which featured paid actors just trying to scare the shit out of those around them in public. Smile itself didn't fail at doing that either, it is without a doubt one of the most frightening movies of the year. There are plenty of jump scares, plenty of moments which generated a collective squeal from moviegoers, and yes the story itself is pretty damn dumb and yes there are many failed jump scare attempts which only really result in sighs or chuckles but for the four to five times this does get under your skin it's worth the ticket price alone. There haven't been many movies since The Conjuring to actually get me jumping but Smile did a great job at it. It is definitely not the type of film you want younger family members to see or snobby film lovers who are used to the A24 way of doing things but Smile is a hair raising mainstream supernatural horror to lead us into Halloween if you want to spill popcorn go see smile. At number 7 is Deadstream. This indie horror comedy flick is suited towards younger Twitch watching audiences, in fact it's completely devoted to stream culture. Set on a Twitch like live stream, it's really only featuring one character, a divisive streamer who in an attempt to win over fans after being cancelled decides to spend the night inside a haunted house as one does. Of course things start to get nasty for our protagonist, if we can even call him that. He is one of those characters that you just love to hate, he is ultra annoying and over the top which is both the perfect blueprint for the streamer type personality and for the comedic nature of this film. See, Deadstream isn't scary, it might get a little twitch out of you, pun intended, but what it is is a hilarious look at both social media's impact on us sheep and a hilarious exploration into the new form of content creation that hasn't really been shown much in film. It is both a nod of the head and a direct middle finger to streamers and their fans in the most respectfully cheeky way. Deadstream is also a really fun way around the tired found footage trope. It's filled with laughs, meta social commentary and a lot of really average practical effects. What more could you want? And at number 6 is Bodies Bodies Bodies. Another fun addition to this list, Bodies 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 is the topical mystery horror centred around a group of rich teenagers who must uncover the murderer at their alcohol fueled party. Alina Regine, who is a bit of a newbie to the director life after starting as an actress, directs a star studded indie cast with Oscar nominee Maria Bakalova, fan favourite Rachel Sennott and Marmaduke himself Pete Davidson. Regine's ability to build a near perfect chemistry between her stars makes this film a quality one. It not only provides us with a lot of laughs, but it helps us understand the whodunit mystery with ease. Being an A24 film, it's also full of social commentary. In fact, it's jammed down your throat. Bodies 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 could easily have been a top 3 film if its themes were more subtly presented. Instead, we hear multiple lengthy on the nose monologues that do take away from what made the film actually interesting. This film at its best is fantastic, it is fun, it is tense, really tense. It has you desperately trying to uncover this mystery 
history and save your favourite characters. It would be one of the best films on this list if it was just a little less jammy with its thematic delivery. At number 5 is Speak No Evil. It wouldn't be a horror list without an international film appearing and of course it has to come from the proud nation of Denmark. A vacation friendship between two families is at the centre of this thriller. Two very different families agree to hang out and well maybe hang out is the wrong word. Horror from other nations is always fascinating because you always find new styles, new techniques, new stories that really do freshen up an otherwise fairly dull genre for the most part. Speak No Evil is incredibly unsettling and not even for the reasons you would expect. Christian Tafdrup perfectly creates an uneasy atmosphere that builds and builds until a memorable conclusion, one that will divide audiences. There are fantastic performances to go along with efficient behind the scenes work. Together, it creates a really tight production. It's hard to fault in any way. Speak No Evil isn't contemporary horror. In fact, it isn't even a genre piece until very, very late into the production. But if it means I can include it on this list, well, I will take it. And at number four is X. The A24 Thai West X-rated slasher made news earlier in the year, almost earning a cult classic status stamp, made even more notable by a same year sequel, which I don't have on this list because I haven't seen it yet. Sorry, Pearl fans. It is of course going over the events, which are loosely based on a true story, I believe, that sees an adult film production halted by some angry old people who want to do some killing. It is very self-aware. It plays around with common tropes that we see a lot in horror. We have the virgin trope, the deviant trope. There are also techniques that although overused in the genre feel at home here with X, a film that is willing to sacrifice a potential scare for a predictable one that really is just a homage to the genre. We also get some incredible work from veteran horror cinematographer Elliot Rocket who gives us some chilling visuals from start to finish. And I do have to highlight the awesome performances. Brittany Snow and Jenna Ortega are pretty great supporting actors but Mia Goth, man she is epic and I heard she's even better in Pearl. X is a really fun slasher, it is chilling, it is expertly crafted, and it is memorable. And at number three, we have The Black Phone. Adapted from the short story, The Black Phone has sinister director Scott Derrickson teaming up with Ethan Hawke again, who this time is playing the role of the antagonist. It follows a young boy in a town rocked by a serial child abductor who unfortunately becomes one of his victims. The entire film is set around his escape and whether or not he can outlast and outsmart Ethan Hawke's The Grabber, who is hell-bent on playing tricks and mind games on the children. It isn't your typical thriller though. Derrickson utilises the supernatural themes found in the short tale, which not only help us viewers put the puzzle pieces of this mystery together, but provide us with multiple jump scares, keeping us on our toes in the process. The Black Phone doesn't quite reach the heights that Sinister did, but as a standalone one-off horror, it's a great view, full of terrific child performances led by the talented Mason Thames. For those who are wanting a suspenseful horror to watch this Halloween, The Black Phone is the perfect choice. At number two, we have You Won't Be Alone. This is a film that most mainstream movies goers won't be watching this Halloween. Set in 19th century Macedonia, it follows a newly made teenage witch as she discovers the details to life she has been missing out on through the bodies of her victims. If you're one for jump scares and supernatural thrills, this isn't for you. At the most, this film is unsettling. There are never any moments that'll have you hiding underneath your sheets, but that's what makes it so interesting. To put this in the horror genre completely redefines it because this has more alike with something Terence Malick would create rather than Rob Zombie. It takes the fish out of water trope and makes it as original as possible as we see this witch try and connect with those around her and understand the way us humans live. It is personal and intimate and doesn't hold back from delivering harsh themes and gruelling truths, but at its best, You Won't Be Alone is simply letting us admire the curious, childlike nature of a newborn of sorts. It is both gleeful and gloomy and as stimulating as any horror from the year, but isn't my number one film. Because at number one, we have Nope. I really started to doubt Jordan Peele at the wrong time. After the heights of Get Out, I really didn't vibe with us or the produced candy man which had me really skeptical about Nope. Well I'm happy to say I was wrong. I loved Nope. It's a terrific extraterrestrial horror featuring aliens, horses and Steven Yun, my three favourite things in the world. It isn't Yun that takes the spotlight though Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer are infectious together. The contrasting dynamic between the on-screen brother and sister is really what reels us in before the scares begin to mount. And when the going gets tough it's Peel that gets this film going. He perfectly balances action with expositional storytelling along with multiple flashbacks that don't feel out of place either. This juggling act is tremendous. It's probably the trickiest script he's had to work with, which is no fault but his own, but he aces it. It is a screenplay and a half. It is an ambitious and creative piece of cinema, one that we will really never see again. Peel horrors feel so different at their best to anything else. He really is becoming an auteur of the genre because everything he creates has so much weight and pressure to it. All his films feel so significant, more so than any other horror director at the moment. I hope he continues with this little purple patch he has found because at his best, his films are just a 
joy to watch and take in. Nope is my favorite horror of the year so far, of course. So that is that. Those are my 10 favorite horror movies of 2022 so far. Let me know down below what your favorite is. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you are new and don't live stream your time in a haunted house.